Tonight, Hewlett Packard is splitting into two. The supplier for Apple Sapphire files for bankruptcy. And is there a hidden payment feature inside Facebook's Messenger app? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 187 for Monday, October 6th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting, healthy snacks right to your door. Forget the vending machine and start snacking smarter with healthy, delicious treats like, hmm, what will we have today? How about some baked cheddar potato sticks? To get your free NatureBox sampler, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twits. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. Hewlett Packard confirmed today that it plans to split into two parts in order to keep up with rapidly changing technology. I'll say. HP Incorporated will include the company's personal computer and printer businesses. Hewlett Packard Enterprise will start selling computer servers, data storage gear, software, consulting operations, and other services for corporate technology departments. The companies are both split fairly evenly in size with more than $50 billion in annual revenue each. HP CEO Meg Whitman will run Hewlett Packard Enterprise and focus on investment in new products through acquisitions and will remain chairman of HP Incorporated. That company CEO will be Dion Weisler, a current executive in the PC and printer operation. Shares of Hewlett Packard were up 5.9% at about $37.28 in afternoon trading today on the news. Although the company also raised the number of expected layoffs it has planned by about 5,000 to 55,000 in total after identifying incremental opportunities for reductions. HP has already shed 36,000 employees under a restructuring program. Apple Sapphire supplier GT Advanced Tech, or GT for short, has announced that it's filing for bankruptcy under Chapter 11, which means that the company will be able to continue normal operations until it can resolve issues with creditors. Apple uses Sapphire from GT in its iPhone lineup for the camera cover and also the Touch ID sensor. But it's not clear how this news might affect Apple's upcoming watch wearable, which uses a Sapphire screen cover for both the Apple Watch and the Apple Watch Edition models. Sapphire was rumored to be featured as part of the iPhone 6, but low yields of Sapphire apparently prevented that. It did not come to fruition. Tom Gutierrez, the president and CEO of GT, said in a statement today, quote, Today's filing does not mean we're going out of business. Rather, it provides us with the opportunity to continue to execute our business plan on a stronger footing, maintain operations of our diversified business, and improve our balance sheet. That's what going bankrupt is all about. Adobe's Max conference started today, and in conjunction, the company has launched a new suite of apps that are now available for the iPhone and iPad in order to focus on simplifying its mobile software lineup into four categories that sync with desktop counterparts, illustration, imaging, video, and a new platform called Creative Cloud Capture Apps. The new apps are all available now, and they're free additions for everybody with a Creative Cloud subscription, which starts at about $10 per month and goes to $50 per month, depending on how many apps you want. AT&T is warning consumers about a data breach involving an insider who illegally accessed personal information of an unspecified number of users. The compromised data includes social security numbers and driver's license numbers. In a letter sent to the Vermont Attorney General, AT&T officials said that the breach happened back in August and that the employee in question was also able to access account information for AT&T customers. Michael Chiramonte, who's the Director of Finance Billings Operations at AT&T, says that the employee that's responsible for this breach no longer works for the company, but it's not clear from AT&T's disclosure how many consumers were affected by the breach or which states may have citizens who are affected. AT&T is offering affected customers a year of free credit monitoring so maybe they'll let you know if somebody has your information and uh, the company is also recommending that customers change the passwords on their accounts car ride sharing service uber has hired former lyft coo travis vander zanden that is a great name to head a new unit that will focus on international growth now while working at lyft vander zanden told recode in an interview 
all the ways in which Lyft was better than Uber. That's not surprising because he was working for Lyft at the time, but it seems he had a change of heart. Vander Zanden recently, previously rather, ran an on-demand car washing service called Cherry, which was bought by Lyft, and also developed a system where Lyft didn't have to set up local operations in new markets. New drivers applied, got their backgrounds checked online, and then were screened over the phone. And then a more experienced local driver did a vehicle inspection and ride along. Now, Uber currently operates in about 46 countries, has plans for more growth in international markets. So office list expansion plans seem right up the company's alley. And also poaching Lyft executives, of course, because those two companies love each other so much. The New York City mayor's office has ordered digital advertising firm Titan360 to stop using public payphones in the city to host gimbal Bluetooth tracking beacons. Okay, so what do the beacons do? They can be used to log nearby phones, Bluetooth addresses, and then mark the date and the time and the location where they're seen, which is also a way basically to track physical movements of cell phone users and potentially allowing advertisers to serve those phones customized commercials if Bluetooth is enabled. Titan 360's chief strategy officer said that these beacons, quote, do not collect user data or information. They do not send or push content, nor do they track people. However, at New York City's request, Titan is in the process of removing all the beacons from the locations and ending the test. Coming up, we know the iPhone comes in a gold model, but what would you do for a gold BlackBerry Passport? Ooh, yeah. And up next, I'll talk with Chris Davies from Slash Gear about hidden payments that might be inside Facebook's Messenger app. But first, let's thank NatureBox for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. Right now, NatureBox is giving you a chance to get a free trial box, free food, of their most popular snacks. Now, we snack a lot of NatureBox here at Twit, and they've got some really good stuff. You don't need, you don't need candy bars or potato chips or stuff that's, you know, it, it feels good for two seconds. They're not good for you. You want to get delicious, wholesome snacks that fill you up and make you feel good at NatureBox. Dot com. They have literally hundreds of snacks, and they're delicious. You don't have to feel guilty about eating them because they're not bad for you. No artificial flavors or colors or sweeteners. No trans fat ever. No high fructose corn syrup. That stuff is bad for you. You'll even find snacks with no added sugar and no gluten. So in the afternoon, you're hungry, you're crashing, you want to get an apple cinnamon crave from Nature Box, or maybe sriracha roasted cashews. Those are nice and spicy. Or cranberry macaroon granola. It's all really good, and it's better for you than the other snack options op out there. Start your free trial today and get a free sampler box at naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong, and start snacking smarter. Naturebox.com slash twit is where you go. Start tracking smarter, and thanks to NatureBox for their support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Chris Davies, the executive editor over at Slash Gear. Hello, Chris. Hey, Sarah. How are you today? Well, I'm really good. Thanks for joining us. Let's start off with uh, Facebook's uh, $19 billion WhatsApp uh, acquisition is, is completed, and it Finally. looks like it's a $22 billion acquisition. So, you know, did, did the price go up $3 billion? Isn't it funny how these things get more and more expensive? Uh, no, the price didn't go up three, um, $3 billion, but Facebook's share price went up um, in the kind of six or seven months since they first announced the WhatsApp acquisition. And as you might remember, the uh, the US government, um, they said the, the acquisition was fine. They had no problem with it. The, it's Europe, I'm afraid, that's been lagging along and they only gave permission, the European Commission, last Friday uh, for the deal to go ahead. And in that period, Facebook stock price has gone up and um, a large chunk of, of what they're paying WhatsApp and the WhatsApp team for um, the app and the service is based on shares in Facebook. And so the value overall of the deal has has gone up. So this is probably has a lot to do with why WhatsApp CEO is going, it's taking a page out of Mark Zuckerberg's book and saying, I will take a $1 salary this next year. That's right. $1 is, is all he gets and he doesn't get any of the bonuses. It's but before you cry too much on his behalf, um, he is getting approximately 1.9 billion worth of uh, Facebook shares, which are going to kind of vest over the next four years. So I don't think he's going to be um, worrying, perhaps, when he gets the grocery checkout and whether he's going to be able to pay for all of his, um, his snacks. 
Over the last few months, uh, there's been some mumbles and grumbles of Facebook users that they didn't like the way that uh, Facebook was forcing mobile Facebook users to migrate over the standalone Messenger app rather than being able to Messenger within the Facebook app itself. Obviously, you can still do that on the desktop. Facebook likes its standalone apps. Okay, so whether or not you like that, it it's appears, if I understand correctly that a messenger hack found what looks to be a possible payment feature. Now, would that be between two people? Because in Facebook Messenger, you can also chat in a group. Well, it's interesting. Yeah, this this came out over the weekend. Someone was digging through some of Facebook's code on the iPhone. They'd jailbroken their iPhone and kind of were looking through uh, what Facebook's app already had in there. And they found this unactivated uh, mobile payment system. Now, at the moment, as you say, it seems to be uh, just one to one person. Um, so you can register a, a debit card and then make a, a kind of a secret payment to someone and no no kind of mention goes about it on your feed. It's nothing public. It's literally just a person to person uh, payment. And but what there does seem to be in there is mention of at some point a, a future group payment system. So um, you would be able to presumably just as you can chat with multiple people, you'll also be able to kind of combine group purchases together. So, you know, if you're out uh, having a um, a work lunch perhaps and someone puts all of that on their credit card and everyone else who's out for lunch can also um, pay them back in, in one lump sum. Yeah, it used to be, well, I guess it's still happening that, you know, having a, a messaging functionality, no matter what else your startup or app did was all the rage. It kind of seems to be payments now. And does it make sense to you that sure, a lot of the world is on Facebook and is using Facebook Messenger, the ones who don't have a problem with it anyway. Does it make sense to have a payment functionality that mirrors something that you could do on PayPal's app or the Venmo app inside Facebook? I think a lot of these, as you say, there are an awful lot of Messenger apps. And so creating stickiness is a, is a big issue. And Facebook's walking a really tricky line, perhaps, between trying to break out its software and services into separate applications, but at the same time, making them engrossing and sort of engaging enough that you keep going back to them. So I think this whole idea of being able to make a, a quick, easy payment between one person and the other in, in a situation that, you know, even even today with, you know, if you try and log into online banking through your regular banking portal, making a payment to someone isn't easy. You know, they don't make it simple. It can be a tricky, annoying thing to do, and that stops people from doing it. And so if you can make it as straightforward as opening up the Facebook Messenger app, then maybe people are going to be more likely to do it. And maybe they'll associate Facebook's app with that service. Mm. You know, going back to WhatsApp for, for a minute, Facebook Messenger mm -hmm. and WhatsApp are, well, I mean, they're owned by the same company now, but they compete with each other. They're messaging apps. Any thoughts on whether WhatsApp will get folded into Messenger or maybe even vice versa since WhatsApp has such good brand recognition already? I think it's interesting that when the European Commission ruled that there was no kind of competition issues about Facebook buying WhatsApp, one of the things they pointed out was that they didn't see them as being direct competitors. And I think to some extent that's true. You know, you can start a WhatsApp account simply by registering your phone number, whereas Facebook is very much tied into um, an identity that you build up on this social network. I think there are two very different areas that they're going to continue to play in, and the, the space for instant messaging clients is still very much an open an open game. So I don't think that we'll see any kind of move to mix them together in the short term. I think WhatsApp has shown that it has a, a huge footprint and a growing one uh, doing what it's doing, making that sign-up process very, very straightforward, appealing to people perhaps who don't want to go to the hassle of setting up a Facebook profile and registering their email address and saying where they went to school and what their favourite hobbies are. You know, some people want to keep these things separate, and I think Facebook is probably going to respect that, at least for the beginning. Although it still allows us to poke each other if we're friends anyway. It does. It does. <laughs> and where would we be without that? Some things never change. Chris Davies <laughs> is executive editor over at Slash Gear. Thanks for joining us, Chris, and let folks know where they can keep up with you. Um, you can find us on uh, Slash Gear at, um, on Twitter. I'm C underscore Davies on Twitter, and of course it's SlashGear.com. Excellent. Thanks so much, Chris. Thanks, Sarah. Have a good day. You too. All right, finally, the BlackBerry Passport officially comes in black and porcelain white. You might have a favorite between the two. But a gold version seems to have sprung up in images on an Instagram account, Paris Rose Gold, which actually has gold versions of all sorts of gadgets, and it's really quite lovely. It's still a little strangely sized in my opinion, but that has nothing to do with the color.
Now, it isn't clear if this device was directly created by BlackBerry. The images that I've tried to find on the Instagram account have been taken down. But if you're interested, you can certainly feast your eyes on a few photos that are still floating around online. Gold passports that are square with keyboards. I don't know. What's this world coming to? That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe at twit.tv slash TN2 and get the show delivered to you automatically. And write us at TN2 at twit.tv with questions, comments, or feedback. Don't miss Tech News today. That is our morning news program, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.